All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Claude Larson, who is an author, educator, and speaker, and we're going to get to hear a little bit about her goals, her dreams, and how we can help. So, Claude, how are you doing? I'm doing great, and good morning to you and everybody out there. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. We're happy to have you, and we like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit more about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Okay. Um, well, I am, uh, my first career, I was an educator. I spent 25 years in the classroom teaching middle school science. So uh, anybody who has a middle schooler out there, that was my dream is to surround myself by 13 and 14 year olds for a very long time, which is not the usual dream. Anybody who's parented teenagers knows what I'm talking about. Um, uh, so that was my first career. And um, I've since I've left teaching, I left just before the whole pandemic uh, remote um, situation came on. So uh, since then, I've written a book. So I became an author, which is like was really exciting to me. It wasn't something I had planned to do. Um, and for the past 20 plus years, I've been on a journey as an artist. So I work in a couple different mediums and uh I make art and for fun, oh my gosh, for fun, I love to be outside hiking, biking, kayaking, all the, all the great outdoors. That's just, uh, that's my jam. That's what I love doing. Awesome. Awesome. Well, tell us what gets you up and keeps you going every day in regards to your book and doing art. Okay. So uh, regards to my book, it was funny because I, I wrote this book because as a teacher, and I, I can't imagine what they're going through right now, but back in 20, 2018, I guess, when I started, uh, when I was um, still teaching, I was really struggling because of the habits that my students had. So <clears throat> in order to de-stress myself and to help my students, I did little mini lessons and they went so well and they so in they so changed the the climate in my classroom that i realized i could help other people i could help teenagers and i could help educators and i could help parents and i decided to write a book and i spent <laughs> um a year and a half like you you write this book and you go this is great and then you read it and you're like oh this is so bad i have to edit <laughs> every sentence and that was the worst because as a science teacher right I wasn't an English person so it was like every word and sentence I was like oh and it just took me a long time um and you know I had to learn all the you know it was just a steep learning curve um but once I got it published somebody said to me like well, what's your well, like what's your dream for this book and I said oh I want to help a million people and he looks at me and he says wow, you know, and, and I said, well, I could say, oh, I've spent almost two years of my life on this project and I want to sell 20 copies to my friends and family, or <laughs> I could have a bigger dream, right? And, um, and it's been, I mean, it's been awesome because I have educators who get the book and then it's like they're helping a hundred of their kids, right? And then, uh, you know, parents are helping however many kids they have. And now, um, I've been working with Youth Corps, which is organ an organization that helps kids who've dropped out of high school. And um, it's so rewarding to go in and help these kids. And people are like, they, like they misunderstand my dream because I say I want to help a million people. And they, they hear I want to sell a million books. I'm like, no, I want to help a million people. So if, one, if I help one teacher who then helps 100 Right. And then I, another teacher who then helps a hundred or however many students they have for however many years they do this, like, that's my dream because I really think, um, especially now after what kids have gone through, um, I, I think they need to build back their, their, their skills and their habits. I mean, yeah, they've lost those academics. Um, and as a teacher, it's weird, but I worry less about that. Because, um, you know, I, I used to work with, you know, my colleagues would say things like, oh, they're never going to learn how to 
graph quadratic equations, which I don't even <laughs> like, right? And I would be like, I'm a fairly successful adult. And I, if you asked me to do it right now, I'd have no idea. You know? Yep. Like, so that like, right. Like, I don't know how many people have to do that in their day to day, but like, I don't. And if a job application said, can you do that? I'd be like, I am not your person. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm doing stuff like being on these podcasts with great hosts and, um, uh, you know, marketing it and just getting it out there for people to just get eyeballs on it. So that's been kind of a, a real journey because you don't, you don't know what you don't know until you don't know it. And you have to learn what you have to learn <laughs> when you need it. And um, so it, it just keeps me, you know, gets me out of bed. I just want to go and, okay, what's next? What's my next step? What's, you know, what happens after that? What's another creative idea? And the nice thing is there's, I mean, there's a lot of things that people do when they're trying to market their book and, and get people to, to look at it. But because I am also an artist, I, I tend to think very out of the box. Um, so I'm always looking for like, what's, what's super different that nobody else is doing that I could do because I don't want to just, you know, I don't want to be on the conveyor belt of the first you do this and then you do that and then you do that. So um, being creative about the book is kind of the spillover from my art because that also gets me out of bed. There are days where I just, you know, I get up, have my little morning routine, a little exercise, a um, little meditation, all of those good things. But then it's like right to my studio and four, three, four hours can go by. It feels like 10 minutes um, and I just love it. And as soon as I look at the clock, I know I need to stop because I am either hungry or like I've had it, you know, like I cannot make one more creative decision. So uh, if either of those things is, is true, anything I make is going to look like the dog's dinner. So I, you know, then I just go take a break. And usually that's when I go for a hike or uh, right now in the winter. Yeah, I'm going for hikes, but in the warmer weather, I go, you know, peel out my bike or load up the kayak or whatever so yeah absolutely well tell us a bit more about the book how it helps people and if it includes your mini lessons what are they okay so the book um, which i now have in three formats um, that was another part of the journey but the book was um i was sitting in my classroom and super frustrated had a very challenging group of kids who uh, now we're talking 13, 14 years old, they just, they had no impulse control. Like I could not get through a sentence without three to four interruptions. Like I started like, let me, let me just tick this off on a sticky note. Cause I was like, how, why am I struggling so much? And I just realized it was, they, they, they couldn't stop themselves. It, it wasn't, they weren't trying to be, um, difficult. They just weren't stopping themselves from being difficult. And I was just super frustrated. I went home. I said, what skills, right? Like I, I was teaching chemistry and physics at the time. So I was like, okay, I fully understand my whole career. I fully understand that these kids might not all grow up to be physicists, right? I agreed, right? Like how many of those do we need? And how many of these kids are going to fill that slot? And so I never kid myself that what I taught was the most important part. I always knew it was about, you know, working in teams and experimenting and discovering like that was where my focus was. So I said, what habits are they missing that is causing me the stress and frustration? And once I figured those out, I said, okay, they need to learn you know, how to adjust their attitude. They need to learn, you know, all of these. And, and it really boiled down to like the universal truths and the, um, the habits that make you a successful adult. And think, you know, 
I, so I wrote it down on a sticky note and I said to myself, this is an experiment. I'm going to do this for 10 weeks. I'm going to go in on Monday mornings and I'm going to teach this mini lesson to each of my five classes. And I'm going to risk falling on my face in front of a bunch of 13 and 14 year olds. Um, but if I don't do something, uh, I can't live with myself, right? I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving frustrated. Um, I'm feeling like I'm not affecting any change. It's really hard. Um, and so I did it. And on the first day, I led them through a two minute meditation. And then I talked to them about the power of their thoughts. And in one day, I saw a change in my class. And I thought, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe this is, you know, the, my positive thinking, oh, I've made a difference. But when I had teachers stop by the room and say, I don't know what you did in your class, but my kids were, ta- the kids were talking about it in my class. And then the, the phys ed uh, teacher comes in. I don't know what you talked about in class, but they were talking about it in the locker room. I thought, okay, I, maybe I'm not crazy. Went in the office, the cafeteria worker comes in. I don't know what you did in class today, but they were talking about it at lunch. And I thought, no, that's not possible. But it was. And they, it was like they were hungry for this and nobody had ever had these conversations. And so I did the 10 weeks on the 10th, the 10th week. I said, well, you know, this was my plan. I was going to do these 10 weeks. This is going to be our last Mindful Monday. The kids were like, what? We're not going to do this anymore? I said, well, do you, do you want to? Cause like, I could talk about this stuff all day. And they were like, yeah, we'd like this to continue. So I did it for the rest of the year. And the following year, I started it earlier in the year. Cause um, I thought, why not? Um, And I, I did it every Monday and it was things like, you know, the power of gratitude, um, the, you know, the ability to let go of grudges um, consistency and how, you know, like small steps, a thousand small steps in one direction is better than trying to make one giant leap and missing the target. Uh, just like really little, but important, vitally important things for them to know. And each lesson sort of built, you know, we started with, uh, you know, excellence and attitude and effort, but then we really got into, some more deep and personal topics. I did, they, they never shared <clears throat> unwillingly. I had kids stay after class and tell me things that they wanted to share with me, which was great. They wrote down their own answers. They did their own self-reflection. It wasn't graded, it wasn't collected. Uh, it was amazing. And when I tell you 14 year old boys were leaving thank you notes on my desk, if you, I don't know, I don't know if you've been around a lot of 14 year old boys and I don't know if you're, yeah, I was one eight years ago. So (laughs) yeah. Yeah. So there you go. And like, I mean, can you imagine handwriting a thank you note to your teacher? Thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Like, and leaving it on her desk. Uh, Cause I was like, this goes in the saved me pile. Like, cause there was, I had this little file of stuff that just (laughs) when things get hard you pull that file out and you go oh yeah let me just refill the well because some days you feel pretty drained but um yeah so um I realized and one of my colleagues uh my one of my closest colleagues said you know I know you're retiring at the end of the year whatever you whatever this thing is that you're doing I want it when you go and I was like oh okay sure, you can have it. I started like doing voice memos on my phone. I'll just forward her these voice memos and she can listen to what I'm talking about. And then I was like, wait a minute, this could be a book. This could help more than one person. This could help a lot of people. It helped me, it helped my students. Like, this is great. So um, yeah, I mean, that was, that was kind of the journey and everything after that, like I would have to, yeah, you know, remember when I wanted to take my laptop and throw it out the window, I'd have to remember why I was doing this because there were some days where I was just like, this is, this is the death of me, you know? Um, but I had, uh, I had a little picture of an elephant on, this is the wall that normally my, my chair and my desk are on the other side, but 
on this wall had a picture of an elephant and I would remind myself, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Like, so I, you know, I tried to, you know, pr practice what I preach a thousand steps in one direction. It, it, it will, you will get there, but um, yeah, tiny steps. Absolutely. That is awesome. That is so cool. And so let's jump more into your dreams and goals. Now, I know you've said you want to help a million people with right. the book. Right. Um, are there any other dreams or goals surrounded around that? Or is that kind of the main one? Um, well, now, um, you know, that was the initial goal. And so, you know, you, you always want to expand on that and make it better. Um, despite my, because the book has like, places to write in it you know there's questions there's these very short chapters two three pages and then like your own reflection questions that are super open-ended that are different the answers are different for everybody um i mean you know the personal is the universal so some kids are having the same struggles they don't realize that other kids are having the same struggles but they don't have to share it they write down their own thoughts um Despite my uh, resistance, I did publish it as an ebook. So now there's a companion journal to go with it. But um, the most recent is I've made it a teacher's edition. So there's all the lessons that you, I mean, it's two pages. You read it to your students. It takes five minutes. Um, and then you have them answer the questions. And each lesson then has a follow-up that is a whole class activity that never forces a kid to share anything personal. So, um, you know, something like if we were talking about excellence, draw a line down the middle of your board, write never on one side and write always on the other and give every kid two sticky notes. Okay. A person who's excellent never does what and always does what? Right. And they get to fill those out and put the sticky notes on the board. No names, totally anonymous. And now you can have a class conversation about what does excellence look like? Right. And and you're using their words. Right. So I don't want you to name a person who's excellent. I want you to name why they're excellent. Like write that down. And all of a sudden you start saying, well, they always listen when you're speaking to them. OK, so you value being heard. Great. And so to you, an excellent person would do that. They never complain. Um, okay, so you realize that complaining is never helps to solve the problem. Good for you. Like, and and you generate a whole conversation around these things, and all of a sudden you see them when they complain, they realize you, you don't even have to say anything. They're like, I should quit complaining and just do this. Yeah, you should. Okay, great, because it's gonna make it a lot easier to just get it done because you know you're going to have to anyway than to complain for 20 minutes and then have to get it done you're not really setting yourself up for an easy time you know um so uh yeah so now i have the teacher's edition and i've actually got um right now i am running a uh like a raffle and anybody who signs on for the you know, um, and I'm asking, you know, it's really for educators. I mean, it's, it's for anybody because you could pass it on to an educator and you, as a parent, you could also do this with your kids, but I'm asking people to sign on with their school email addresses and, you know, which is very low, low risk, right? Because if this is going to come into your school email, I know people don't want their personal inbox jammed with things, but uh, I'm running a raffle and giving away three books to educators because I feel like, you know, 2022, the year's going to start, New Year's resolutions, all of that. But it's also a good time to help kids because they hear about New Year's resolutions. They might not know how to really like tackle one, but, you know, this gives them some ideas. Um, and like it, I mean, and it helps teachers finish out like the next part of the year. Sounds like most adults need these concepts. <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of people say that. And it was funny because when I, you know, you put it out, um, it's on Amazon. And when you put it out, you get these reviews and people are like, 
uh wish i'd had this when i was a kid and like i know it's some adults who could use this book you know and i'm like yeah. feel free to buy them a copy <laughs> you know? but and it's you know it's true um i had um some people that i know also purchased it and one woman said she was she was reading it for herself and one chapter she was like wow that my son could really use these words right now and she gave it to him to read and he was like can i get a copy of this you know like he saw this is a workbook format i could write in here you know so she bought him his own copy and just um yeah it, it's nice um and it's true now that i am you know creating my art and kind of doing my own thing making my own making my own schedule my you know my own days um, I forget because there are a lot of people out there who could use these things and they're, I'm not surrounded by them seven hours a day anymore, you know, cause I'm not teaching them because let's face it, 13, 14, nobody looks back on 14 and goes, that was my best year. I was top notch. <laughs> nobody says that, you know, they're kind of like, I, I run into my former students and they're like, I am so sorry for being <laughs> such a jerk in your class. And I'm like, oh, well, what are you doing now? Oh, well, good for you. Because you know what? Like yeah. <laughs> everybody at 14 is trying to figure it out. Like, I'm glad you got somewhere good. So yeah. <laughs> God bless teachers. I honestly, y'all are the best. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, and I'm telling, and you know, like I always wanted to be a teacher. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't know it. I went to college for something else. And I think it was just, um, like, oh, this would be good. And then I realized this is not my, this is not my thing. Um, and once I got, you know, I switched over, it took me like a year to figure it out in college. Once I switched over, I was like, oh yeah, these are, these are like the things I want to be doing. And these are what I, I don't want to be, uh, I started out in physical therapy and I thought, and I did volunteer hours because I said, well, if I'm going to, you know, invest a lot of time and money into getting this education, I want to see what I'm getting into. And after some volunteer hours, I was like, okay, stroke people are super angry because they've, they're now missing something. And I, as much as I had, like my heart went out to them, I, it was like anger, anger, anger. I said, this is really hard. And then athletes I said oh, I'll work with the younger you know the athletes and they're just mad because they're missing the season or practices or games or states or you know whatever and I was just like this is too angry for me I gotta get out of here and um and I had the experience of uh working at a summer camp and I was like this is my energy like young people I mean I mean right face it I was 20 I was, you know 20 and 19 something like that and and I'm thinking like, no, no, this is what I want to be around, like young people energy. And I kept that all through my, like, even now, I know, I know there are not a lot of people who'd be like, oh yeah, give me a group of 14 year olds. I'm on it. You know, nobody says that, but I'm like, I would be totally comfortable and happy to be with them. So I just like to be around young people. And I, I feel like I'll be that way forever because I just find them like refreshing they don't have the mental confines that some not all but some older people get into that like mindset of like well I've always done it this way and I'm like oh as an artist I think that's just like the worst um yeah because once I've done it that way and I know how to do it I don't want to do that anymore the <laughs> the instant I've like gotten good at something I'm like okay phew, that's done next Hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, if there were one or two people that you could meet right now, and this can be a specific person or a type of person, and they could help you take the next step towards really reaching and helping those million people, who would they be and how would they do it? Um, well, um, I, I think out of those, out of all the people I could choose, I feel like I would have to choose somebody who is on probably, I want to say television, um, that supports education, that would support my book, 
Um, and I have, I, it's funny, I have mailed the book to um, like news anchors when they start talking about their kids or when we were going through the whole education, uh, when it was really at the forefront, I mean, we're still going through it, but when it was really at the forefront, I was mailing copies to newscasters saying like, oh, I, you know, you have kids, I hear what you're saying, maybe this could help. Um, so I, you know, I'd love for something like that to happen. I'm working on it. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, that's a really, that's a really good question. Who could help me with this? I mean, if I could, you know, I thought, I thought you were gonna say if I could meet anybody like living or dead, because I would be like, mm, Albert Einstein. Um, <laughs> he can't help me now. I mean, <laughs> I love his words of wisdom. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I feel, I feel like I need to bring it to people who have more uh, influence than I have. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. You ever thought about starting a podcast and like giving the book to teachers and interviewing them on their experience in their classroom? Uh, that's an amazing idea. No, I had not thought about that. I guess I, I mean, hmm. Or if you're not a podcaster, just pitch yeah. the idea to somebody and be like, hey, podcasters, somebody go do this because it's important. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I've definitely been reaching out to, uh, pot, you know, obviously I'm on your podcast, but um, I, you know, I've been reaching out to podcasters and I have like, I do, this happens mostly when I go hiking. I get this, like these niggling little words in my head that are like, you should do a podcast. And I'm like, no, no, you're doing a podcast. And then, and it's like, no, that's not what I mean. And I'm thinking like, I don't know, my plate's pretty full. Do I add this? Now you kind of have to because <laughs> I know because now I know because I because the universe is sending me the message and now you're repeating it to me and yeah the uh, the energy of youth uh, I don't know I have to think about that <laughs> oh, I look forward to hearing your podcast in three months oh okay three months okay wow you're uh, you have an ambitious timeline for me okay <laughs> awesome Awesome. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna write out, start a podcast in your dreams and goals, and it'll be in the show notes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so people can hold you. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, what are the most important one or two things that everyday people can do to really help you spread this message and get it out there? Um, everyday people, what they can do is, you know what, if, if they could like, you know, the old, like tell two friends, but I feel like if you're an educator and you try this, um, and again, you could sign up for my raffle, you know what, I'll send you all that information. We could put that in the show notes. Um, but, you know, try this book and find somebody else who, you know, cause there's, there's always somebody that, you know, that could benefit from the from the short chapters of this book because i know you go like oh it's 30 chapters some of the pages some of the chapters are like three pages long um it's not um like laborious reading and it's a lot of like stories that kind of lead you places but i feel like you know i've been doing this slow build and i keep telling myself that's i guess that's what it is it's a slow build um but everyday people just sharing it with others like if you're a parent and you're you know tearing your hair out with your 16 year old like who isn't um you know try this and then tell the person who sits next to you at the soccer matches or at the baseball games and oh I tried this you know like it's I think it's just like word of mouth you have to experience it because until you read it um, it sounds like I'm preaching stuff to kids, you know, like don't do drugs or, you know, things like that. But it, that's not at all what the book is about. It's like, what do you want your life to look like? Okay, well, how do you set that up? You know, because it doesn't just happen, right? It takes, uh, like, like the old saying, it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. Um, so, yeah, I mean, everyday people share it. 
um, and educators like use it because as a teacher, the hardest thing is like, you know, like <laughs> there's like the teacher dream where you're standing in front of the class and like making a fool of yourself, I guess. And, and I thought that too, when I, when I did this, I was like, I'm going to do this even if I fall on my face, you know? And I thought, all right, you know, this might be a crash and burn, but it doesn't matter. I dedicated, like, I'm going to do this for 10 weeks. Cause I said, if after 10, you know, in 10 weeks, I'll know either way this helped or it didn't. And then they'll graduate eighth grade and they'll forget all about it or something will shift. And, um, you know, I just took that risk and it was so beneficial for my students. They were transformed and, and my job, I looked forward to going to work on a Monday. Now, I don't know how many teachers say that, but I was like coming in the office, like, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Like it's Monday. And they were <laughs> like, you're nuts. And I'm like, come to my class any period. Like I invited all the administrators, the guidance counselors. I was like, come see what I'm doing. And they were like, wow. And uh, even, you know, teachers get observed. Um, and my, my principal came in on a first period Monday morning to observe me as a like surprise observation. And I was like, wow, bold move. First period Monday. All right. And I was like, all right, grab a piece of paper, have a seat in the back. And he looked at me like, yeah, I go, yeah, you're going to do this. And um, I did this lesson and he, you know, the, the post-op uh, meeting, he was like, that was that was really good. You should do more of that. I go, come, come every Monday. I do it every Monday. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm doing this plenty. I said, I, I recognize I'm being paid to teach a science curriculum, but like this literally helps me get through my curriculum better and in more depth than I would if I wasn't investing 10 to 15 minutes. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I need educators to just give this a try. Um, You'll, you'll be surprised. My, di like my discipline in my classroom. I mean, I, I was pretty, I don't want to say strict, like, but it was, it was a science class. So like safety first folks, you know, and, um, it, I had like no interruptions. Once I started doing this, I was kind of like, wow, this is remarkable. They, they were so much more, um, present. Uh, which, you know, a lot of 14 year olds aren't so much. Um, and I think once they, you know, I mean, there's a lesson in there where they have to evaluate themselves questions like, how honest are you? Hmm. You know, like when you got to write that down and nobody's looking, all of a sudden there, you, you can see the shift in their, like, they realize I might not really be all that honest. Uh, Maybe that's not a good thing. Mm, maybe it's not, you know, but that's for you to decide and that's for you to change it. I'm, I can't change it for you, you know? Yeah. What I really love about this is that one, like you're getting routine, like self-reflection into their schedule, which, you know, a lot of adults don't do. Like I'm not even doing it like routinely. And um, not only that, but you're also like giving power to their voice. And you said, you're asking them to like, think about their life and like design it and like what steps you need to take. And it's like, also not a lot of adults do that. <laughs> and it's like, when you give power to a kid's voice where they felt like they didn't have power, you start to see their life change, which is really cool. Yep, and I'll, t and I'll tell you, I had one student who, um, I mean, I choke up still, but this one student, his life went from typical, you know, mom, dad at home, um, you know, middle class, like um, everything's good to um, mom is on her third round of rehab. Dad is broke trying to pay for it. Um, he's so unfocused. He loses his job because his boss can't count on him to they're homeless to he and his sister are separated living in two different grandparents houses, dad living in a car. 
like, you know, um, it, it was, you know, like the riches to rags was happening and he was falling apart. He was losing weight is he looked awful and he could, I mean, his least of his problem was that he wasn't doing his homework or doing well in school. And like, I started doing these lessons and he said to me, like, I realize my future doesn't have to look like what my life looks like right now. Yep. Like, yeah, you have the power to direct that, but you have to choose, you have to make the choices that you want to go in the direction that you want. Like I, nobody's going to pick that for you. Like you're 14. And at some point, you know, hopefully you're not going to be living in your parents' basement till you're 40. So what does your life look like? And he was like, it doesn't look like this. And I said, there you go. And he immediately like had hope for himself when he was feeling pretty hopeless. Uh, it just, it had such an impact. It was, and it, and it felt, I mean, it felt good for him. And then it, it felt good for me too. Cause I was like, this is, this is why teachers go to work. Like, I don't go to work to tell you about the periodic table. I go to work because I want to affect change and like make the world a better place, which is why even now I have found that, you know, um, working with youth Corps. It's like, I still get to go and do that on a regular basis and help these teenagers who they made one bad choice. They chose to drop out of high school and it's like, okay, the rest of your life is not defined by this. You have a million other choices. You've already chosen to go back because you realize without a GED, you're not going real far. Um, and it's just, it's just, it feels so good to affect that change and watch them grow. Like you, you see it for your eyes. And I think parents doing this with their kids, even if you read, you, you know, you read the book and once you hand it over to your child, you cannot go look in that book. Like that's theirs. That's their personal, you know, hopes, dreams, fears, their business. Right. And um, but once you do that, it opens up the opportunity for those conversations. Yep. I love that. And that's the thing. That's the thing is like, um, and I think that was the surprise for me as a teacher was nobody had had these conversations with them. And, you know, I had had them with, with my own children. My, I mean, my kids are like in their thirties now, but um, I had had those conversations with them. But some of these kids, they hadn't. And I'm like, well, you know, parents are busy and there's more distractions and um, I get it. You're, you know, you're at work all day and then you got to get dinner on the table and check and make sure people have done their homework and um, all of that. But like so vital is to have these conversations with your kids. That's, I mean, that's the dream is, man, if everybody had these conversations with their kids, one, you'd have a, a much better relationship, right? Which helps your whole family. And then they have, they know they have the support to follow their dream, follow their path and figure it out as opposed to thinking that it's about how many likes they get or how many followers they have, which is unfortunately what a lot of them are focused on right now. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome. Let's jump into our thriving three now. And the first question we ask is what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. Okay. Favorite book. Hmm. Toss up. Essentialism. Love that book. Have you read it? I have not. It's on my list. Oh, so good. Um, or the one thing, another Another Fantastic good one. book. <laughs> Isn't a great book? I love that book. Um, so those two are like, like recommend them to so many people. Um, movie, I don't know. I'm not, I don't have a two hour attention span for movies usually. Um, it's fine. <laughs> uh, po po and podcast like this, uh, totally off topic. Um, it's called Art Juice. And it's these two women from uh, the UK 
and I could listen to a British accent all day and they talk about art and they crack me up and they're like, I, I want to sit and have like a cup of tea with them. Like, <laughs> so that's kind of like my, you know, whatever that's, that keeps it light. But um, yeah. I love it. And what's yeah. one way you like to take care of yourself? Uh, being out in nature. That is probably my biggest, biggest one. And, um, and meditation. There we go. There we go. All right. The last one is what is one action step that you can take right now to really go and meet that person that's on television, supports education and is able to support your book. So you can really get that message out there. Hmm. Um, Wow. One action. Well, one action step is I got to mail them the book and I got to, I got to reach out. Um, and uh, yeah, I think um, it's funny as a teacher, I never had to network. It was like, okay, here's your roster of 150 human beings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I never had a network and I, I probably just need to like learn some networking skills Um uh, and, and events, which I think that's what's not happening right now. Like I was planning on doing like New Jersey's teachers convention and like all these other things I'm like, uh, like not happening because yep. of all the madness, but, um, yeah, I got to get out there meet more people. I guess I got to get out of the woods, <laughs> step one <laughs> and get to where all the other people are. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, good, a good book on kind of mailing people your book and getting a conversation with them is called giftology giftology i'm gonna write it down grab my pen giftology yeah i'm pretty sure it's like a short two-hour book but this guy used giftology to like get in the room with like really high up professional people like tony robbins like he got a one-on-one -on -one meeting with tony robbins by giving oh. him a really meaningful gift oh that like led to a, you were so thoughtful, clearly you're a person that I want to do business with type of thing. And he, he like roots it in the Bible of like, in the Bible, you always saw Kings giving these really extravagant gifts to other Kings to like, kind of like a yeah. show of goodwill in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And so same thing, if you give a really thoughtful, meaningful gift and you took time to research somebody, understand what they like and need, and then you gift them something that speaks to that, it's a show of goodwill that can lead to like a strong networking relationship. Obviously be genuine. Don't do it just to get a transactional thing. Right. Know. Right. And that, and that has been my thing is I listen to, like I said, I listen to, um, you know, to television uh, either news people, celebrities, whatever. And when I hear them talk about their children and the struggles of having teenagers, I'm like, oh, they could use yeah. this book. And the, um, you know, I have to say the most exciting person I've ever mailed this to is Lou Holtz. Do you know who Lou Holtz is? I do not. You don't. He was, um, an award. He, he's considered a national treasure. And he was like the award-winning football coach for Notre Dame. And he ended up getting the um, Presidential Medal of Freedom. And as this recipient, you know, he was being interviewed and I listened to this interview. And I mean, this guy was like, I mean, it's, I can't even, you know, his, his living situation growing up, he was like, they lived in a basement. They were super poor. I think he might have been born in that basement. Like he had the most humble beginnings. And he said, the most important word in my life is choice. And you always have a choice of how you're going to act, what you're going to say, you know, what your attitude is going to be, how much effort you're going to put in. All of these choices make your life. Now, here he is receiving, you know, the, the a presidential metal. Um, and he's like, it's literally because of every small choice I have made along the way. And so I mailed him the book and he wrote me a letter back. I was like, 
wow, this is amazing, you know? And he was just like, I read the whole thing. I love the short chapters. You know, I gave a copy to my kids so they could use it with their kids and like, you know, like all of that. And um, that was like super, it was super exciting for me. Um, just the fact that he wrote back because I, I do, you know, I gift it with no expectation. There wasn't like a string attached. I was just kind of like, your interview spoke to me. You used the word choice. My book is called The Power of Choice. And like, I just felt compelled to like send this to you because you're such a quality human being. Um, and just to get like a reply from somebody at that level of life was really fantastic. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's um, awesome. Yeah. It was. And just to Oprah next with your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we have one last question for you. It requires mm -hmm. a bit of pretext. So you know how there are people on the planet that have a fixed mindset, not willing to accept help, not willing to accept change. And sometimes they live their whole life like that and they die like that. Yes, they do. Other times they change more to a growth mindset, willing to accept help, willing to accept change. In your opinion, what is the catalyst that causes that change? Um, the catalyst that causes that change is people letting go of two things, their vanity and their ego. Because as I watch, um, some people who are aging in my life, um, I, I watch them struggle because they refuse to accept help. And I mean, that's, you know, I've, I'm very focused. Like my first priority has always been my health. Cause I, you know, I said, I don't know when I will need to use a walker. It could be at 65 or it could be at 95, but I can do everything in my power to make it closer to 95. Right. Um, and I watch them, they're, they're so, uh, they have so much vanity that they don't want to accept help that's given to them. And I feel like that's, um, it's, it's to their downfall. Like I've helped so many people in my life, right? I was a teacher, I was of service. That was my job. I've helped so many people, but at some point I recognize the time will come when I will need that help. And I think if people would get in that mindset, life is dynamic. It's constantly changing. It's not always going to get easier. There are times that it's going to get harder and you help those that you can when they need it, but then you just accept it when you need it. It's just, um, it's, it's a cycle. It's, it's on go. It's, you know, infinite. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And how do you think we can help create an environment that facilitates people letting go of their vanity and ego sooner rather than later? Don't judge them for it. Don't make them feel bad about it. Um, you know, don't make them feel less. Okay. So you know, you've been able to do it all this time and now you can't do that for yourself. So I'm going to help you, but I'm not going to, um, you know, puff up my chest and be like, oh, I'm helping you now. Like, uh, do it with a sincere, kind and empathetic heart. Do it because you want to. Don't make it I feel obligated and I am resentful about doing it because that energy makes it really hard to accept. Whereas if you're doing it out of, you know, truly wanting to coming from a place of love, how, like if somebody loves you and gives you a gift, you can't refuse it. Right. And if that gift is now I'm going to help you by providing meals for you, or now I'm going to help you by buying you that walker because 
you have fallen, right? Or like it comes from, if it comes from a place of love, it's very hard to refuse the gift. Um, but people, yeah, unfortunately, people have built up their ego so much that they they aren't willing to accept it. And I think sometimes it is perhaps given with judgment or obligation or resentment. And that's when it feels, um, I think that's when it's difficult to accept from the recipient for the recipient. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome. Is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? Um, I don't know. I think I know my art, my author website will be in the show notes. I have an artist website too. If anybody wants to go look, look at that. Um, Claude Larson um, I think my parting words is um, everything changes and you got to embrace the change. And maybe in the words of military, sometimes you got to embrace the suck. <laughs> so that you can make the change but uh, the minute you think you know something and the minute you think you know you're right is the first step to the downfall just keep thinking what if the opposite were true what if what I think I know doesn't matter or isn't relevant or isn't true at all and just keep looking for answers yeah. Yeah. I love that. I've actually been learning a lot about limiting beliefs and all that good stuff. And yeah. a lot of people get stuck in their limiting beliefs and they limit themselves and never take the time to ask themselves that question. What if the opposite were true? But it's funny how it works. Like also on the, I'm really confident in this. I know I'm right. Well, what if the opposite's true? It just helps you keep that open mind and be proactive and prepared. Right. And, keep, and just keep learning, like keep learning new stuff. I think, I think that's the beauty of having been an artist all these years is keep learning new stuff. Like I'll make it, I just made a series and I'm like, oh, I love this work. I've never made anything like it. It's so great. And now my next series, well, it's got to be different. And so therefore it will be better. And so therefore, what do I need to learn yeah. to improve that? Um, and yeah, people get to a certain level of competence and then they stay there. And I think of it as like stagnant water versus running water. Yeah. You know, like I want my egg, my energy to be like flowing and moving and clean and crystal clear. And th yeah, the minute I master something, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go take the next step. Go do something else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Claude, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Guys, thank you for listening. And if you're listening to this and you vibe with what Claude had to say, you are like, I support that mission. I want to get the message out there to teachers. Make sure to buy the book, share it with teachers. If you happen to have teenagers of your own, share it. If you happen to know adults that need it, share it. Um, <laughs> also, please send this message to one to, th one to three people you know need to hear it. So we can get it out there and we can help people realize they have the power to make a choice. Shoot us a five-star review on iTunes and we're out. <laughs>